It was on a dreary night of November that I beheld the accomplishment of my toils. With an anxiety that almost amounted to agony, I collected the instruments of life around me, that I might infuse a spark of being into a lifeless thing that lay at my feet. It was already one in the morning, the rain pattering dismally against the panes, and my candle was nearly burnt out, when, by the glimmer of a half-extinguished light, I saw the dull yellow eye of a creature open. It breathed hard, and a convulsion motion agitated its limbs, but the luxuriances only formed a more horrid contrast with his watery eyes that seemed almost the same color as the dun white sockets in which they were set, his shriveled complexion and straight black lips. His jaws opened, and he muttered some inarticulate sounds while a grin wrinkled out his cheeks. He might have spoken, but I did not hear. One hand was stretched out, seemingly to detain me, but I escaped and rushed downstairs. I took refuge in the courtyard belonging to the house to which I inhabited, where I remained during the rest of the night, walking up and down with the greatest agitation, catching and fearing each sound as if it were to announce the approach of a demonical corpse to which I had so miserably given life. Oh, the mortal could not support the horror of that countenance. I passed the night wretchedly. Sometimes my pulse beat so quickly and I hardly felt the palpitation of every artery at others. I nearly sank to the ground through the gore 66 and extreme weakness. Like one who on a lonely road doth walk in fear and dread, and having once turned around walks on and turns no more in his head because he knows the frightful fiend doth close behind him tread.